With Telegram's 900 million monthly active users and hundreds of millions flowing in to the Ton ecosystem, it is not hard to see once you dig past the surface why people are so bullish on Ton. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I am very excited to bring to you another video about a deep dive, finally something very interesting with relatively high conviction. And so this is another video in our series of top ecosystems to be bullish on for this upcoming bull run and the ecosystems within it. So today is all about Ton or the open network. And guys, I dug in deep into this. So it gives you a good starting place to do your own research. Right now, as I'm making the video, I can tell you that I am extremely bullish. I'm going pretty heavy into this. So without any further ado, guys, if you're excited to hear about Telegram or the open network, the blockchain that is integrated now into Telegram deeply, and I'll show you how deep it gets, do me a favor, destroy the like button. If you're new to the channel, what's up? My name is Kyle. Welcome. It's good to have you guys here. It's been a while. Without further ado, let's get into it. There's a lot to be bullish on here, guys. I'll show you what plays I'm making. Before we get into it, I just want to preface this with saying that it's not all good, and we're going to get into some of the frustrating parts that I had while diving into this ecosystem and kind of how to navigate those as well. So maybe it doesn't take you as long to get into the ecosystem if you want to do that as it did for me. So Ton or the open network. This is a history we're going to go into first and talk about it a little bit. But to give you an, an overview, this is a blockchain originally created by the Durov brothers, Pavel and his brother. I don't know, remember his name, but back in, uh, what was it? I don't know. I'll get to the date in a while, but I think it was 2021 or something like that. They started creating the Telegram blockchain and that was called Gram back in the day. And it was shut down by the SEC. They had to refund investors. And we'll get into that in just a bit, but there's all kinds of really cool services here on Ton to start out with. You've got things like anonymous eSIM, which is super cool. Uh, this is very, very useful for things like pre preventing SIM swaps. And uh, so I'm looking into this myself. I haven't bought one yet, but I think that it would be very, very interesting to have as you can have a phone number, be anywhere in the world that works globally. And it's anonymous where every other SIM card you essentially have to give your phone number to. DNS, we'll get into that in a bit. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And let's get into it a bit more. So uh, Delphi, if you guys aren't familiar with Delphi, one of the, the big research institutions in, uh, in the crypto space, you can see that they made this chart essentially here where it shows kind of the different ecosystems. And you can see here in the layer one category, the only thing that was really, really, really up is Ton. And most other things were down quite a bit. Injective up 14, but real winner here is Ton, clearly. And as we move forward here, you can see that the Ton price, even though today is down about 5%, in the past year, you can see it really start to explode over here in February, and it just continues to make its way up. Uh, you have a nice little pullback right now if you are interested in getting into this depending on when you watch this, I myself made a fairly large looking to hopefully place a much bigger bet on Ton itself. You know, I was actually coming into this video thinking that, you know, Ton was going to be something that, meh, you know, itself, but I was thinking that the ecosystem would be something that we're very much looking into. But after doing my research here, it is something that I think Ton itself as a coin, even at a current valuation of $16.8 billion, I still think it's dramatically undervalued and we can expect to see a ton more liquidity coming into the market. And I'm pretty sure in the next five minutes or so, you may be as convinced as I am about the future valuation of this thing. Now we can see that if you compare it to other layer one blockchains like BNB, for example, or Solana, both of these things having huge market caps, BNB almost 100 billion, Solana 64 billion, come down here to Ton, and we're talking about less than $17 billion market cap. And it's actually surpassing Ethereum and daily active addresses. I'll get to that in a bit. This is just, guys, this is, this is just current pre-parabola, pre-banana zone valuations here. We're about to see potentially huge liquidity coming into the market. To give you an idea of what that might look like, let's just take a quick listen here to Raul Powell. The view is this space goes from 
two and a half, three trillion now. By the end of this cycle, it's 10 to 15 trillion. By the end of, let's say, 2032, just extrapolating the normal log trend of this, it's $100 trillion by 2032. That from here is $97 trillion of wealth. For this. Which is 30 times more than we have now by next bull run. But as you can see, he said... By the end of this cycle, it's 10 to 15 trillion. 10 to 15. Of- so right now we're at about three. So between three to five X, the size... That probably means that you could expect to see these as well, easily three to five X in market cap. So you're talking about if Telegram catches up to something like Solana or certainly BNB, but you'll might see in this, in this video, why potentially it could surpass both of these. I know some of you guys are laughing and thinking that's crazy. Just wait, give us a second why it might be just one of the best undervalued blue chips in the space right now. You can see it's at number 10. So it's officially made its way into a blue chip. And if BNB does a three to five X that puts it at 300 billion to 500 billion or Solana between 200 billion to 300 billion, which it probably will do maybe even more than that. And Ton a three to five X, I think Ton will outperform dramatically Solana and BNB this run considering the distribution that it has. We'll get into that here in just a second. Back to the history, you can see that the SEC officially made Telegram return $1.2 billion to investors and pay $18.5 million penalty because they were selling unregistered securities. That was very disappointing. And so they later went on to create, uh, essentially they had to remove themselves, Telegram, from this project, which they had already built, majority of it, And then it was taken over by community. Let's listen to Pavel here at the Token 2049 in Dubai earlier this year. But, you know, for all of this, to make this happen, we are going to rely on the Ton blockchain, the open network. Well, not because it has a blue logo and it's reminiscent of a paper airplane, but because it's so scalable. At our scale, we need something that can process tens of millions, potentially hundreds of millions of transactions. The open network reached a record in processing uh, the number of transactions they processed uh, per minute last year and it's a pretty interesting speech if you want to go watch it token 2049 announcement ton the open network it's very interesting to go check out very bullish go check it out so you can see here that essentially uh alo says the rebirth of ton and talks about a little bit about the history here where you had a bunch of momentum and then it kind of fell back into obscurity and then here was where the Ton official collaboration was announced because people were just speculating before, like, is Pavel Durov and Telegram officially behind this project or is it just a community kind of takeover? And in this video, uh, he does introduce someone named Andrew, who is the CEO and founder of the Open Platform, not to be confused with the Open Network, which is like the lead development team for Ton. And you can see after this, it just kind of skyrocketed and Pantera made its investment into Ton over here, $150 million. We'll talk about that shortly. There are basically three main ways to explore the Ton ecosystem. It is through mini apps, meme coins, and the open league. We'll get into all those mean here in just a second, but you can see here, if you go to ton.app forward slash categories, you can see some different categories and the different apps are being built. In the ecosystem, there are over 300 of them. Now, this is where I really started to pay attention in the research today. I read the whole thing, so you don't have to, but it's worth a read. I dare you to go do it. So Pantera Capital, for those of you who don't know, Pantera is one of the most OG, if not the OG, VC in Bitcoin and crypto. They're currently in the process of raising their billion-dollar fund five. This talks about a little bit about that fund and also about their largest investment ever. 
And this was written by Dan Moorhead uh, initially, and then it goes down to one of their analysts to talk about why they made their investment. So I just highlighted some of the most notable spots where Dan says, I met so many wonderful people in this community, all with the shared goal. It's so energizing. I recently had lunch with Pavel Durov, founder of Telegram. The purity of his conviction is mesmerizing. And you can go into seeing some of the other things I didn't ha highlight, but I was very just aligned with me personally and aligns with our entire ethos of crypto is he says, Pavel, it's a quote here from him, from his blog post saying, neither I nor my team will engage in political censorship. We will not remove the anti-corruption community of Navalny or hundreds of other communities, which we were ordered to block. Freedom of information is an, an inalienable right in a post-industrial society. And without this right, the existence of VK does not make sense. VK, for those of you who don't know, was the Facebook of Russia for a long time. I remember those days, actually. And they were ordered to shut it down. Pavel and his brother had to leave Russia uh, for their safety. And as immediately when they did, they founded Telegram. Another thing he said in the Tucker Carlson interview, which I haven't seen yet, I want to go watch it, probably go watch it after this. Pavel says, everything in my life was about becoming free to the extent possible. My mission in life was to allow other people to also become free. This is the mission of Telegram. It just literally pure honesty, freedom, and genuine mission-driven people. I, I love people who have these first principles approach to what they build. It's meaningful. And these are the kind of things that will change the world. They have 30, 930 million users on Telegram. And this goes into Pantera's Fund 5. Here is where Ryan Barney, a partner, talks about the rationale behind the investment. So they have over 900 million monthly active users. Their values are freedom to communicate privately, freedom to express yourself publicly, freedom to build your apps and businesses. So just some of the highlights. The whole thing is well worth the read. It's a Pantera Capital, and you can search for the Tawn Investment. Telegram is the world's fastest growing and largest social messaging platforms. They have spent zero dollars on marketing and are adding almost two and a half million users a day. They have 930 million monthly active users and Pavel is the sole product manager at a company with only 30 people. Insane. And they are getting more downloads than the next closest competitor, which is a privacy protecting messaging app, Signal, where you can see that they have here, 36.7 million monthly downloads, just second to WhatsApp and Snapchat. I had no idea Snapchat was actually growing at that rate, which is pretty staggering. Keep in mind, these are January 2024, and I believe this whole report, let's see, when was it written? Five, May. So just a month ago. But some of the data is a little bit, a little bit old here. Nonetheless, still the growth rate is insane. When you look at here, a scalable platform built for hundreds of millions, this is what makes Ton maybe so interesting here, is this architecture ensures the network can handle millions of transactions per second and scales efficiently as user numbers grow, making it ideal for developers aiming to launch applications for hundreds of millions of users without compromising speed or security. So even though the block time is a little bit slower than Solana, five times as slow actually, you have a faster time to finality, which is what is really important. So actually being able to verify your transaction has been processed. So while Solana might feel quicker, the actual final finality time is actually faster on Telegram. And when it comes down to complex transactions, Solana doesn't do well at all. Whereas Solana is well for very simple transactions, but for complex, Telegram handles those things quite flawlessly. When it comes down to scaling, this is the most important thing. Ton can scale a lot, two to the 60th power shards per work chain, where Solana can't do sharding at all. And then this is really important too. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know how, how important I believe cross-chain communication is or cross-network communication, uh, being able to communicate with one app on another shard or another a scaling mechanism, you know, that's very, very important. So the whole network can talk to each other. Here on Ton, you've got near instant communication cross shard. This data was, again, only goes to April, but you can see explosive wallet growth on Ton to 15 million wallets as of April. And that is up from 4 million uh, back here in September. So next section here is the era of crypto mini apps. 
Over 360 million users engage monthly with what Telegram refers to as mini apps, which includes chatbots and mini games. With Tawn, we envision that integrating crypto into these mini apps will significantly enhance the user experience for the hundreds of millions of users. There are more than 300 projects on Tawn, the majority of which built mini apps on Telegram, which are accessible via the Telegram Apps Center. Earlier this year, we observed how meme coin trading tools like BonkBot generated tens of millions of dollars in revenue through Telegram's user interface. Tawn-based applications such as StormTrade, I want to talk about that in a bit, now enable users to pay, to trade perpetuals, cryptocurrencies, stocks, stocks, and equities using the same interface. StormTrade facilitates over $10 million in trading volume daily, and we believe that similar Tawn native Telegram bots will become the preferred user experience for many traders, meaning over just mini apps or mini bots like BonkBot or like Banana Gun, Whereas they use Telegram, but they're not Telegram, they're not Tawn native. And I was thinking about it earlier today and thinking, yeah, Tawn native would probably be the preference because with the other bots, you need to trust them with creating a a self-custody wallet. Then you need to display your private keys, which then leave some room for vulnerability. And then you need to copy and paste those over to your phantom wallet or whatever, and then restore the wallet like that. Whereas in Tawn, if you build a Tawn native, then you don't have to go through that whole process as you get to use the integrated wallet directly in it. Telegram serves as a foundation for viral social and gaming applications. Early experimental Telegram games like Pixels and Fanzy Battles have attracted millions of users within days, demonstrating the platform's vast potential for user engagement. Catizen a, is a cat-themed mini-game platform built on Tawn that now has over 4 million users, of which 700,000 users play daily. Notcoin, a social app built on Tawn where users compete to mine digital currency, has rapidly onboarded 30 million users, one of the fastest crypto adoption events ever recorded, if not probably the fastest. And we can see that Notcoin launched at what $2 billion, now sitting at like $1.2 billion valuation. And I think every participant in that got something like, I don't know what it was, $900 or something at a minimum. So that will be something to keep in mind as we talk about some of these other things that are happening over there right now. Pretty astonishing, actually. So that's the Pantera report. Again, it's worth a read. A couple other things that were in there too, where this is also uh, Paul uh, Verdicate from Pantera. He basically sums up a a lot of the article. I think there was one thing here that I wanted to to talk about as well, which was, oh yeah, of course, it started, one of the announcements at Token 2049 was that they were integrating natively with USDT and all the fees on the, on the Ton blockchain are set fee at 10 cents. So it's not super cheap, but it is a layer one and likely will get cheaper as it scales. But that also means that you can send stable coin to anyone in the world nearly instantly for 10 cents, like goodbye, Western union, MoneyGram, XRP. This is going to open up doors for everybody to send money around the globe, getting closer to a truly digital peer to peer payment system. Pretty impressive. There are some new ones. And I'll, I'll mention this too, toward the end where I think some of the things that we need to be cautious and aware of, but all in all, so far looking pretty good. And of course, this is the Crypto Super app. This is another catalyst here called the Open League. I briefly talked about it before, but essentially it is just a competition going through seasons and it has done really, really well for growth so far. It has caused a lot of developers uh, and designers to come and just launch all kinds of projects. So you can see here right now on the most recent one, the leaderboard for this current season, which is season four, that you have Rika in the lead, which is uh, Redo is the essentially resistance dog, number one meme coin on Tawn. And then you have Rika, which is resistance cat. (laughs) So, uh, and there's other ones too, like mittens. And we'll get into all these in just a bit here. Oh, you guys can't see my screen. Here we go. So you got Rika, Redo, mittens, and I'll get into those in just a bit. So, Let's go over here and talk about the flippening that crypto Twitter is ignoring, essentially. And you can see here that Tawn daily active addresses has surpassed Ethereum's in just 
just recently here has gone through the roof. Now, is this all organic? Is this all people like using sustainable apps being built there? No, not really. And so it still has a lot to prove. But the fact is, is that they found some sort of adoption, even if it's fairly temporary or who knows what this will lead to. And that will make more sense as I get into this here in just a second. But when it comes down to TVL, or total value locked as a good metric that we look at uh, to see kind of how much value is being brought over to a chain. Let's just scroll down and scroll through all of the different chains here. And you can see that even though Ton isn't, it's number 15, it's not in the top three or 10 or something. When it comes down to one month change or even, you know, even seven day change, Ton is an outlier for sure. Now, the other ones that are outliers like Lin Linnea, uh, it's because they've got an airdrop coming, but Ton is already token circulating. There's no airdrop coming. And the other ones that are pretty popular, like Scroll, also airdrop coming. So it's a true outlier when it comes down to adoption, TVL, money being brought over to that ecosystem. So a good way to explore the Ton ecosystem is to go to CoinGecko and look under ecosystems and look under Ton ecosystem, and you can see the kind of the top tokens that are available over there right now. You can see Resistance Dog up 54% in the past seven days. I didn't I didn't know Shrapnel was on Telegram. Very interesting to see that. And you can see some. Not everything is listed here. Like we don't see Mittens. We do see Rika Resistance Cats. You can see it's a crazy run in the past, even the past 24 hours, up 61% and up 156% in the past seven days. But what I like about these so far is that they've been around for a couple of months and they're likely not a rug, which is what we see so much of in base and Solana. I'm not saying that, that it's not gonna happen in Telegram, but the ones that we're gonna talk about today have been around for a while. Now, a lot of what I talk about today, for me to get into it today, to go buy Resistance Dog and Resistance Cat and Mittens and Taunt itself, was quite frustrating and I'll get into some of that and I'll show you some examples as I go through the video here. But, uh, Jess, if you guys don't know crypto by Jess, she is actually making videos on how to do a lot of the stuff that I'll be covering in this series of videos going through all these ecosystems. And I think Ton is one of the most important ones to pay attention to yet for me it has been the most frustrating to get into. I'll explain to you why. Uh, but when it comes down to using DEXs and bridges, uh, Jess will be making a video very soon, depending on when you watch this. So probably in the next 24 to 48 hours, if, if you're watching this when, it, when I release it, if you're watching this a couple days after, then it should be uh, up by now already. Crypto by Jess, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, disclaimer, is my girlfriend and she's awesome and uh, really helps translate to a more easy way, slower and easy to understand. So Go check out her channel. And now Crash, this is his philosophy here. It says, let me be very clear. I 100% believe that Redo is going to hit 1 billion minimum this cycle. But if Ton hits 100 billion market cap, which we talked about, I think that's very feasible, if not potentially more than that. Redo's market cap should be 5 billion. I like this approach here of should be. But just because something should be doesn't mean it's 100% will be because factors such as team, early holders, crypto politics, not enough community coming together to pay for exchange listings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is Redo at right now? It's at $110 million valuation, really good liquidity for this. And Redo is, I believe was created by Pavel himself. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below if that is, if I'm speaking out of place here, but you can see it went all the way up to here to 144 million. And with this recent altcoin bloodbath here, you had a nice pullback all the way back down to 90 million. And now it's bounced back to 111, depending on how my bridge transfer is doing. We'll see that in a bit. I did buy some of this about 20 minutes ago, and I would like to buy more once my bridge transfer completes. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit about What's better to use a bridge versus a centralized exchange, if that's even an option for you. You can see here, Rika, almost a million dollars in trading volume in 24 hours. This thing's been live for two months, and 11 days, so it's not new, most likely not a rug and you know, doing quite well here over the past 24 hours. 
But again, also a nice little pullback. This thing shot all the way up with a candle, a wick up here to 88, uh, 88 cents. So it was at 8.8 .8 million and now a nice little pullback to 7.2. I'm not sure exactly what caused this big, huge pump here, but it wasn't, it was just earlier today, I believe. Let's see here for, yeah, just earlier today. So wouldn't be surprised to see this thing cool off a bit, although I always believe that when you're looking at something, do your own research and a DCA approach is always the best kind of enter and exit in something. But if you're bullish on the ecosystem in general, I think that you know, the resistance dog is going to be a lot more solid long-term. It's kind of solidified itself as a blue chip by now. And then you have this kind of the whole dogs versus cats meta that is coming out and so you have resistance cat over here, and then we get into something called mittens, which is, uh, which is what Telegram itself. I believe this is Pavel's. I believe this is Pavel's cat himself. But you can see Telegram themselves have tweeted or not tweeted, posted several times about this cat mittens. I believe it's Pavel's cat. Again, let me know in the comments below. And guys, let me know if it, if you call it Ton or Ton. I've heard people say it both ways. I'm saying Ton, am I wrong? Am I right? Let me know in the comments below. But you can see uh, Telegram many, many times has talked about this cat mittens going all the way back and it is doing quite well. This was also created two months and two days ago. Far less volume, but very stable and steady price growth. Again, I would say that most of these things here are going to be leverage plays on Telegram itself. So if you're bullish Telegram, then these things are probably a good thing to check out. Again, not financial advice, not saying to go buy any of these things. There is a good chance all of this goes to zero, probably not Ton, but definitely the memes. And if you look at the cat narratives, 7 million, 8 million, and if you look at the other big cats, cats in a dog world, $365 million market cap, Mog, $320 million pop cat, 250. These things were all much, much higher just a month ago or so. So the cat narrative is a real thing. Something to check out. Now, when it comes down to DEXs on Ton, the leading DEX right now is StoneFi or StoneFi. And then you have DDust and Megatron, which is almost non-existent when it comes down to volume. So what are the plays here? Well, for one, you want to be looking, if you're using the DEX, you want to be looking at both of these. Uh, just to see where you get better pricing. So for example, if I were to do a hundred ton right now on for mittens at 81,505. But if I were to do 100 on mittens over here, 80,866 versus 81,505. So check both D dust and Stonfy to see where you're getting better prices. The reason that I bring up Stonfy not only is it the leading DEX by volume, but also it is it has a token that's trading. Now, what I don't like about this is I don't like this massive disparity between circulating supply and FDV. It's $28 million market cap, but 1.679 FDV which means a lot, a lot of potential sell pressure and inflation coming here quite soon. Now, when could that be? You might ask, well, this thing was, the TGE was August, 2023. August, 2024 is when a lot of these unlocks start happening. So you've got pre-seed, private sale, and advisors all starting to unlock, not to mention all these other things have been unlocked and started vesting already as well. So the only thing that's not really unlocked is, is team until another year from now. But the team can always take liquidity from all of these other buckets over here. So I'm cautious. Now, what does that mean here? One, I guess there's room for someone like DDust who will likely probably have a token. So if you just swap some things and use it, you'll probably get an airdrop when, it, when and if they eventually do have a token. Is it something that I'm going to buy? I'm undecided at the moment because... Potential upside is so big. If you look at Uniswap, $7.8 billion, uh, not including the aggregators over here. That's another thing too, is a, a, an aggregator on Ton 
is a play I'd like to see, something like a Jupiter, right, or a one inch, right, where those things are quite huge. Jupiter's at almost a billion, one inch at 540 million. But then you look at native DEXs also too, like, well, not sushi, but pancake, for example, 600 million, something like radium, 400 million. And then you come back over here again to Ston, and you're talking about 28 million. So still potentially, you know, even in, in the right bull run with the, with this ton narrative taking off, you're looking at maybe a 20 X 30 X from here, just to get to where the other leading DEXs on BNB and Solana are. So pretty good, uh, pretty good potential outcome. Again, just something to be cautious of is the unlocks that are ahead of you. It's a lot of potential sell pressure. Now storm trade, we talked about this a little bit earlier. This is something that I'm very bullish on for one, because Pantera talked about it Two, It provides good use case. Three, it's a native built into Telegram. The only thing is, though, is that you can't buy a token yet. But what you can do is go to the website, storm.tg, and try to see if you can get on the whitelist. I'm not on the whitelist. I'm not sponsored. I don't have any type of affiliation with these guys. But me, myself, I'm going to try to get on the whitelist and see if I can. So you can just go over here. And when you click on this, it takes you to something like this, and it says... Open in Telegram, open in Telegram, and try to get into the whitelist spot. Now, some other potential plays here are things like the LSDs, right? Like the, the liquid staking derivatives or liquid staking options on Telegram. So you have TON stakers, which it seems like the, S, the TS TON token is coming quite soon. And you also have BMO, liquid staking. So... Hopefully Jess will make a video on how to stake in these. And I would suggest that just go stake a couple ton each because likely there's an airdrop coming for these. And if you just use a protocol and stake some ton, likely you'll get an airdrop to some of these things like tap swap, for example. And I'll talk about these other things that are have me one in shock to a little bit in disbelief and, and three, just kind of questioning everything is things like tap swap, which has right now says more than 48 million players. It's like another thing like not coin where people just sit there and tap and they're getting a huge airdrop. And it's seems to be working as far as getting attention and people to be doing this kind of stuff. Another, another one too, that's, I want to mention, bring to your attention, is this Durov meme coin. I haven't bought any of this yet, but I probably will. It has a lot of community interest over here. You can't see my head's in the way. A lot of interest here. I don't really love the cartooniness. At least they didn't make him look like a retard. I think, you know, if you're bullish on the ecosystem, having a little bit of exposure to all of these things and then just watching as the ecosystem picks up, what is catching traction? What is continuing to get traction? One of the interesting things about this Durov is that they're actually building a Telegram bot that's native, kind of like think of like Bonk bot or Banana Gun, but native to Telegram. And they're going to have some buybacks and burns uh, with the revenue generated there. This is the evolving sheet for the series that we're doing here. I've kind of filled these out here where... You can see some of the tokens that we talked about. Now the altcoins, of course, they can go back to zero. So always take that into consideration, but this sheet will be available in the description below. To be able to participate here, you're going to need to get a Ton wallet. Ton Keeper is one of the most popular. The one I downloaded was my Ton wallet because it has the most reviews on the Google Chrome extension store. And so far, I like it. All of this was new to me when I started researching this a few hours ago, basically. And you, you can see this is the bridge, bridge.ton.org. Again, Jess will probably cover this in her video on how to do this stuff in more detail. For me, I just finally made a pretty big transfer over here. And let's see, is it in my wallets now? It is in my wallets here. And so we can see, just for fun, what I'll do here is now that I have my ton in here, We'll come over back here and I will make another, I will make another purchase here. Let's see. I, do I have mittens already? I do have mittens, but I'll probably get a bit more resistance dog since it seems to be going up in the chart. So what we do, we do, we go over here to Stonfy and I'm going to go to redo like this, just show you guys a little bit tutorial here. I'll do like this, like $7,000 and swap. 
and it pulls it up in my wallet over here, send, and it has the passkey built in. So that's nice, biometrics, and that's about it. So you can see that's how that goes down. Another thing that they have too is over here on Fragment, the, you can go and buy phone numbers and usernames, which is quite interesting. What I haven't tried yet is, yeah, I think you could just buy these and set up a new Telegram account. So you can search for the one for sale and let's go from high to low, for example. So you can see at collections for sale, <laughs> like, like that's insane. Uh, these are all priced in ton. So multiply by almost $7. Yeah. Go see if your name's available, right? If your name's like Fred, let's see, is Fred available? No. For example, Kyle, I think is for sale. No, that's Kylie. But anyway, you can go check for your, your premium Telegram username. That's another thing here at Fragment. I tried to use the bridge and I made some big mistakes. And one of them was bridging over USDC. There's almost zero liquidity on USDC. So when you use the DEXs, it's impossible. So you have to bridge over to Ton, or not bridge, but use to get Ton coin on ETH first and then use a bridge like that. Now, if you try to do something, I was having some problems before. Let's see, I've got, you know, let's say I want 950. And then what I had before was I had like a bunch of decimals like this or something, right? And if I try to swap it, it's probably going to give me an error message. Mm. Nah, it did this time. But anyway, that what made, what fixed this problem for me was making sure it was a nice round number. And that seemed to solve the problem. I don't know why, but that's just the way it works. Just a little bit of troubleshooting for you in case. I also don't know yet what these are. This is a, I got, I'm going to airdropped all of these things. This is a, this is this new project over here, which I'm very skeptical about. Hamster Combat, 8.6 million followers. This account was created March, 2024. And on, you can see on YouTube, they have 20, almost 25 million subscribers and they produce like, you can see some of these videos one day go 18 million views, 450,000 views. These are all people just farming the airdrop. And so I think this is one of the things about this kind of tap thing that has got me pretty skeptical. Another thing too, is just this tap swap AI thing. It just seems like, I don't know, is there really that 50 million, it's really 50 million players around the world who are trying to farm this airdrop. I don't know if it is. I don't know how to look at that. Is that bullish sign or is that bearish? Like on one hand, it's insane to see this many people onboarded into crypto. Imagine how many wallets will need to be installed to do that. Incredibly bullish. It'll bring people in. But of course, this is not long-term sustainable. And to see what these guys do with these things and this new community around it will be interesting. You know, are most people going to get the airdrop and sell or are they going to somehow become crypto users. That is something we will find out. Guys, that's wrap it up today. If you found this valuable, I'm glad because I found this super valuable. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.